Hi, thanks for checking out this tech tip on sweep loop calculation and reporting. Once again, I'm Mark Flayler, a senior application engineer here with Imagine Technologies, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to do some things with sweeps as well as get the calculation off of that and report that into build material type items for uh, proper costing and reporting for the geometry we would tend to sweep from time to time. So here we're going to take a look in this video at some of the design intent around this, why we're doing it. I'm going to show you a little bit of an iLogic snippet that I have written for this as well as it will be available on the blog as well. We'll talk about a few limitations for the coding that I have in place and lastly we'll talk about how to report this correctly in order to do what our design intent is. So without further ado, we'll jump over to Inventor and take a look at the sweep length calculation methods I have in place as well as the reasons why we're doing this. Okay, so over here in Inventor, I have a trailer, and inside this trailer I have a sweep that's already been run. It's a little bit of tubing that I have inside this for drainage or perhaps some sort of plumbing that I have inside this unit. And my whole reasoning for getting a sweep calculation is so that I can take the length of this sweep and put it into my build material so then I can report on that for ordering how much pipe I need, uh, what kind of procurement I need to go through in order to get that. Now, there's other ways you could do this technically. You could use Inventor's tube and pipe system and then get the bending machine information off of it, which will give you developed length as well as original length. But this is a little bit more kind of sidestepping that in case you need to do this as a traditional sweep or if you don't have the higher end tube and pipe package or perhaps you're trying to do this for something not tubing related but you still need the information of length off of something and there's quite a few different reasons why you might look at this and say wow that's really cool I could probably use it in this scenario but the end result is to take our swept geometry grab the length off of it and then report that into our build material so the part I want to examine here is this copper tubing pipe in here now inside of this file this is one that's already done, and it actually returns to me my sweep length on this guy. If I were to go into the path that created this, and simply do a measurement, and I'll select the loop and grab this, I get the value of that loop. Now I want that value to be reported into a parameter, or perhaps an I property, that I could then utilize in a bill. So let me finish my sketch here. And in order to accomplish this, I have a iLogic rule here called loop calc. This rule is a rule that essentially will look at my sweep and return to me the information of that length and then report that over to a parameter, which that methodology allows me to utilize that in reporting. So in this certain case, this is already done. I want to take a look at how this is kind of done at a more ground level though and talk about some of the limitations. So instead of working here for right now, I'm going to jump over to another file. So here I have a sweep coil spring, as you can see here. And what I'd like to do is get the total length of wire that I would need for this coiled spring. So here I have a couple of values like radius and overall height. And what I'd like to do is use the same sweep calculation here to find out how much total wire I need. So I'm going to look at my rule over here and see what it's about. So it, it basically has a little bit of VBA coding in here, some access to the API, but it's referencing what's called sweep one. And sweep one needs to be called sweep one. If I create two or three sweeps, then I have to create additional uh, rules here for the different sweeps that I create. And basically it's going to grab the information of the path, grab the length of that, and then return it to a parameter called sweep length inside of my parameter list. Once I have that in there, I can then use an export to an I property, or perhaps just change my bill material quantity calculation to be instead of an each to be equal to sweep length. So we'll take a look at that as well. So this will be on the blog. You don't have to worry about copying this down here in the video. I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to create my sweep. So I'll go up to my 3D model tab, grab my sweep command, got my path, in my profile here. There we go. I'll say OK and it'll create sweep 1. Now 
if I look at my rule and I run it, it actually didn't give me any errors there, which is good. If I go to my parameter list, I will see that it created sweep length with a certain value to it. Here it was 1994.80 and a bunch of change. So that's great. It reported that information to me. And I can go over here now and export this to a iProperty if I needed to. Let's just say I do that. And then my iProperty list here will show sweep length. You know, I can change the format of that too if I want it to be unit list or a certain precision. Of course, we can do that in our parameter box. But I want to take a look at how this might update and some tools I can use to show the updating. And also, maybe I want to actively see the length of that sweep as it's being created. So I'm going to go over here to my forms and just create a quick form in here. And I'm going to add a radius, overall height, and sweep length, which is a read-only value. Here I'll say OK. Launch my form real quick. And let's say my radius changes to 40. So it gets a little bit bigger. Change my overall height here to 450. Choose Done. Now what's happening is you're not seeing this update at all because of the way that it's not triggering. So I'd like to trigger it whenever an eye property changes. So I'll go up here to Manage, go to my Event Trigger, and anytime I have Part Geometry Change, I want to run the Sweep Calc Rule. Choose OK, launch this form again. Here I'll change this to 37. There you can see my sweep length automatically update. Change this back to 400. Then I can see my sweep length updating there as well. Now if I want that to be a read-only value, so I don't have someone inadvertently come in here and change this, that can be done in the form as well. So I'll go to sweep length, and this is a read-only true for that value. Launch it again. You can see I can't fill it out, but it does report to me the information that I want to see. Now, if I didn't want the parameter in there, I could have put the I property because I exported it. So again, very quick way to do that. I'll get rid of sweep length here. Go over to I properties and grab the sweep length I property instead. And again, that's going to be a read-only value. Now, if I go back to my parameters before I go back into that form, I'm going to change my property format by right-clicking on that sweep length. Here I'll change it from inches to feet, decimal to fractional, and put a fractional tolerance to it. Say OK. If I look at my form again, I can see the sweep length has been changed there. So I'll change this to 40 again. Four fifty on the overall height, and seeing that constantly change. Now this has some limitations to it. If I jump over to another file over here, if I were to do a sweep with a twist, which is a newer function of the software, so let's say I take this circle here, and I sweep it along this path, and I give it a twist of ten eighty, so it has a significant amount of twist now, which should change the length from a standard 48 of a straight sweep to something longer. However, when I do this, and I look at my sweep calculation down here, let me go ahead and run that rule. If I look at my sweep calculation down here, you can see it stays at 48, which I know is false. So it's actually using the length of the path, not the length of the sweep geometry itself. So be aware of that. In the case where I had on the previous file, this was actually following a path that was already twisted. So it didn't have a straight path to it. So that's how I was able to get the correct value over here. Now lastly, let's take a look at how we might report on this geometry to show up in a bill. If I go up to my bill of material, mistake. If I go up to my tools tab, and look at my document settings. On the bill material tab, I would change my base quantity calculation here to be instead of each to be equal to my sweep length parameter. 
And then this is something that would show up in my bill. I could also have this show up in a parts list. I can custom format that column, of course. I don't have to stick with the value that you see before you. And I'll say OK. So if I take a look at one of my finished examples here with this guy, if I were to take a look at its bill material, if I scroll all the way down, I can see I have the tubing and it has the unit quantity reporting correctly the way I want to see it for the total length of tube for this and that can show up then in my parts lists on my drawings. So I hope you enjoyed your, this look here at the sweep length calculation and reporting for Autodesk Inventor.